On May 26, 2013, Harrison O'Keen found himself in a pitch black, eerily silent abyss, submerged 30 meters beneath the ocean's surface. This harrowing existence became Harrison O'Keen's reality when the ill-fated Jaskin Ford tugboat capsized off the coast of Nigeria's Escravos region. Harrison O'Keen and his crewmates started their day like any other. Harrison was a cook aboard the Jaskin Four, a tugboat chartered by West African Ventures in Nigeria. Tugboats assisted oil tankers as they filled up from one of the offshore oil drilling platforms that dotted the African coast. Although it sounds like harmless work, the crews often dealt with pirates. Because of pirates, tugboats enacted strict security policies to protect the crew. On this particular day, the Jaskin Four helped two tugboats guide a 70,000-ton supertanker filling up to safety. Harrison and the crew had sailed for years and knew the sea, and their experience had prepared them for most things. However, Harrison was about to realize that even though something appears mundane, it can still be life-threatening. So, with pirates far from his mind, Harrison rested up for the next day. While they slept, the Jaskin Four and the other two tugboats performed tension towing functions, that is, until disaster struck. Other than the choppy waters, everything seemed normal. Little did Harrison realize that this was the eerie calm before the storm. In the early morning hours, Harrison woke up to use the restroom, but then all hell broke loose. The tugboat suddenly shook as an all-powerful wave slammed into the vessel. Because of security protocols, the crew was stuck inside their rooms as the seemingly alive but monstrous sea fed its icy tendrils throughout the ship's inner workings. The boat tipped over so fast that Harrison was already underwater when he saw what was happening. As the roar of the hungry ocean filled his ears, his first thought was to try and escape. Harrison realized he was trapped in the bathroom by the intense pressure of the water rushing against the door. While it's unclear what went through Harrison's mind, he had to watch helplessly as three of his fellow crewmates were sucked through the emergency hatch into the cold, crushing embrace of an unforgiving ocean. As the nightmare set in, Harrison sought to control his thoughts. Yet, before he could determine his odds of survival, another jarring blow forced him into the hallway where his crewmen had perished only moments before. With the tugboat upside down and submerged, Harrison was forced into an adjoining bathroom in an officer's cabin where an air pocket had formed. Harrison willed himself to remain calm with little more than his wits and no idea of his chances of survival or how long he'd be stuck. Trapped within a six-sided box of insulated steel 30 meters below the ocean surface with no guarantee of survival, anything could happen. Claustrophobia was the least of his worries. Even sound behaves differently in such a confined steel enclosure. His survival up to this point was a miracle. With the absence of sound, your body becomes the source, and hearing your blood pumping through your veins and organs is intense. Harrison was alone and had no idea if rescue teams could find him or would save him in time. Fortunately, many boats were in the area, and they launched a rescue attempt to search for the surviving crew members. Harrison had beaten the odds once, but nothing was guaranteed, even with his good fortune. Only later he understood that the tugboat had sunk to the seabed. Rescue crews knocked on the hull as they searched for survivors. Within his sanctuary, Harrison knocked back. Still, the silent abyss of his prison remained, choking the life out of the sounds he could make. Shortly after, the rescue crews gave up, seeing no signs of life. Harrison's outlook turned grim. Without food, water, or light in his air pocket, he wondered if he would ever be saved. Harrison found himself alone in pitch darkness. With no sign of a rescue team, the 29-year-old cook had to face reality. Eventually, he would succumb to hypothermia still only wearing the boxers from the morning before. With a drive to survive, 
Thinking of his wife and family and what would happen to them, Harrison decided to take a risk. With no lights, diving gear, or even a breathing apparatus, his only way out was to dive deeper into the ship in search of an escape. He knew it could kill him, but it was his only chance. Scuba diving is an exhilarating experience, but diving too deep can cause oxygen toxicity, leading to erratic behavior and death. And if you ascend too quickly, nitrogen bubbles form in your body, causing decompression sickness, also known as the bends. Regardless, Harrison was determined to escape. He reasoned that someone would rescue him if he could keep surviving. He lowered himself into the murky abyss and felt his way through the tugboat, using only his memory of the ship to guide him. Harrison found another air pocket in the engineer's office, as if by divine providence. Still, it wasn't the time to celebrate. He was running out of options. Harrison created a floating platform from a mattress and wall paneling. The platform allowed him to combat the effects of heat loss and stay above the water without expending energy. Fearing the worst, West African Ventures hired DCN Global to retrieve the bodies of the lost crew members. From their ship, the Lewick Toucan, they launched another expedition to search for the crew. When you realize that all hope is lost, it's hard not to give in to despair. Harrison could only listen in horror as the steel prison magnified the sound of every drop and splash of water. In these moments, Harrison leaned on his faith in God and determination to give him strength. The dive crew had their work cut out for them. Not only was the tugboat 100 feet down, but a silk curtain from the seabed would make visibility impossible. The dive crew slaved for an hour to get into a locked ship. Finally, three divers, Nico van Heerden, Andre Erasmus, and Daryl Ustaisen, reached the ship, preparing for the worst. Guided by their supervisor above, who could view the camera footage from Heerden's gear, the divers moved carefully through the vessel. They recovered four bodies, unaware of the previous horrors that Harrison had heard. By now, Harrison had spent 60 hours underwater and would be dealing with carbon dioxide toxicity. So when light passed through the hallway just outside the engineering room, Harrison couldn't believe what he saw. Desperate for a rescue, the exhausted cook dove into the water to catch Nico before he was left behind again. Harrison's arm grabbed hold of Nico, startling the diver and alerting him that his mission wasn't complete. Assumptions can be dangerous, but no one knows that better than Harrison, which Nico believed to be another body they had yet to recover. What follows is a view of the footage showing the moment Nico sees Harrison's hand. While the sight may be unsettling, Nico believed he had found a missing crew member's body and grabbed Harrison's hand to carefully bring him up. Yet, as soon as he did, he felt Harrison squeeze his hand. Nico thought he was dreaming as he looked at the impossibility of a living person staring back at him. As Nico's supervisor shouts that Harrison is alive in his microphone, he's instructed to pat the cook on the shoulder to keep him calm and give him a thumbs up. The other divers met and spoke with Harrison as well. However, they still had to get Harrison out safely. The diving team deliberated on how best to save him. They decided treating him as a normal deep saturation diver was the best way to bring him back to the surface. When humans dive to those depths, they can only stay there for approximately 20 minutes, so the team decided to bring Harrison up in stages. The divers then prepared him for his ascent, giving him an oxygen mask and warming his body with hot water. Keeping him calm and collected, they moved him to a diving bell, where the crew would stay with him as they safely ascended. At 7 p.m. on May 28th, Harrison arrived at the surface, thinking it had been only 12 hours. He was shocked that nearly three days had passed. Harrison wasn't out of the woods yet. The dive team had to move him to a special decompression chamber to help his body depressurize. The process took two and a half more days, but was successful. After 60 plus hours underwater, Harrison O'Keen was alive to tell his story, a tale of survival against all odds. His resourcefulness and calm demeanor allowed him to survive in the dark abyss, even when he shouldn't have. 
His voice is one of faith and resilience, reminding us that when all hope is lost, an air bubble filled with hope is enough to get us through.